Welcome back. Well, sun's out, gun's out, which means I'm excited to show you some of the new mineral sunscreens I've been trying out recently. But the first thing, I lie. <laughs> I do first have a couple of chemical sunscreens that are also new to me. So let's start there, shall we? First up, the Supergoop Glow Screen SPF 40. This is the second Supergoop product I have tried. And after the unfavorable review I gave their daily screen in my last sunscreen video, let me tell you, I like this one much more. Other than the unseen sunscreen, this is what I'd call the flagship sunscreen product from Supergoop. I was a little worried when I first squirted some out because it does have quite a tint to it. Not really bronzed, but more like a champagne shimmer. It definitely blends out once you apply, but if you are any more pale than I am and don't want any added color in your sunscreen, then this may not work great right for you. Otherwise, it gives a very shimmery, healthy, blurred out glow to the skin. I thought it would look greasy or oily, but it sets down completely. The name is very apt. It is very glowy. I've never really worn a sunscreen quite like it. And I have to say, it's less like a sunscreen and more like a glowy makeup primer with SPF. It is quite pricey. I paid about 40 bucks Canadian for this. Um, but I was able to score a second full bottle of it for free on buns. So that's a bonus. I have been wearing it regularly underneath makeup and it works great. Um, and also on days when I just want to look more alive, but I'm not going to wear makeup. It works great too. <laughs> Into these hazy, lazy, crazy days of summer, it will not really be enough sun protection for me. I'll have to layer it with other products, but this winter and spring, I have really been enjoying it. So not much to say here, but this is just a new Copper Tone Defend and Care Spray Sunscreen that I have been using. It's very delightful. It's a spray on SPF 50. Um, it's very similar to the Banana Boat spray that I really like and have mentioned in my uh, previous sunscreen videos and in my empties videos. Goes on completely clear, isn't greasy, and it does have a hydrating effect on the skin. But too bad I haven't seen it on the shelves since I bought it a few months ago because I would repurchase it. Okay, so moving on to our mineral sunscreens. First, from Paula's Choice. And ladies and germs, this might be the most invisible, most hydrating, wearable mineral sunscreen I've ever tried. Whew, I recently made my first Paula's Choice order to try out that 2% BHA skin perfector that everyone and their mother have always raved about and thought while I was there, I would try out some sunscreen. Uh, these are on the pricier end, but luckily they have an option to purchase a travel size, which I opted for in case they don't work for me and uh, I wouldn't get stuck with a whole tube. So as always, I am looking for a sunscreen that has more moisturizing properties so that I don't have to layer quite as many products. So I was excited that this first one I chose is called the Essential Glow Moisturizer. The color of the sunscreen is a little off-putting at first. It's not tinted. It's almost like a grayish color, but then it completely disappears into the skin uh, once you apply it. And it does definitely give some sheen to the skin, but not a shimmery uh, glow like the Supergroup. And that means I cannot believe this is a mineral sunscreen. You usually don't get any kind of glow with minerals and it doesn't cling onto hair or dry patches, and it's pretty much clear. But, my God, can we get a higher SPF? This would be a go-to for me if it was at least an SPF 50 or 60. I definitely cannot get away with this uh, SPF 30 as a daily sunscreen in the summertime. So the second tube from Paula's Choice is called Super Light Wrinkle Defense. So it's also an SPF 30 mineral, and this one is geared towards a normal to oily skin, which I don't have, but I was curious to compare to that previous one. This one does have a bit of a tint to it, 
uh, almost like a pinky tone, similar to um, the Innisfree mineral sunscreen I've tried in the past. But unlike that one, again, this Paula's Choice sunscreen disappears into the skin. It wears very similar to the Essential Glow Moisturizer, with the distinction, of course, of being less glowy. It's supposed to be a matte, um, but it doesn't go completely matte. Um, but it's also not dry, if you know what I mean. I guess it's kind of satiny. But these are both kind of an A+. If you have normal to oily, go for this one. If you have more dry skin, try the other. But now, please, Paula, make them in an SPF that's higher. I actually looked at their website again for this video, and a lot of the reviews are just, make the SPF higher. So, yeah, do it. Let's do it. <laughs> Let me know if you've tried these um, and if you love them. Next, Attitude. Attitude. Attitude Mineral Sunscreen Stick. I think this is the only sunscreen stick I think I've ever tried. This one is cute. It's like a push pop. Um, and as a solid mineral stick, I was a little bit worried how it would feel, but I wasn't completely turned off by it. Um, as you can see, it does not go on completely clear, and it does take a little bit of time to rub in. I was worried that this would be kind of hard on my hands, because it does have to go from solid to liquid, but it is pretty convenient. Um, once you rub it in, it leaves a nice emollient glow on the skin, um, and like I said, it isn't 100% without a cast, but for a solid product, I thought it would be much worse. This is not the type of uh, SPF stick you would want to use to reapply over makeup. I think it would move things around too much. But in a pinch, it would be good to have on you for emergencies. And I feel like this would be good for kids. Plus, it smells like creamsicles. Plus, it's vegan, ocean safe. And the cardboard container is completely biodegradable, which I think is very impressive. It's only an SPF 30, so like I said, I've been using it in the cooler weather. Um, and for summer, it might just be good in emergencies. Copper Tone Pure and Simple. This, I think, is going to be one of my new favorites. And the first mineral sunscreen I've tried from Copper Tone. This is their new SPF 50 Mineral Sunscreen. And I don't want to speak too soon, but I think it's quite similar to one of my other faves from Aven, the Light Mineral Lotion SPF 50. And it's about half the price. It's a runny, creamy formula that does take a bit of time to work into the skin, but once it's there, doesn't leave much of a cast, and is in fact moisturizing. Um, it can tend to feel a little bit heavy on the skin, but I don't think it's anything out of control, especially for a mineral sunscreen. I've been very impressed with this product, and it cost, I think I got it on sale for 10 bucks, but it's usually around 15 I think I said it in my very first sunscreen video, but I've always been happy to see the big cosmetic and skincare companies begin to dip their toe in the mineral sunscreen pond because even if at first they're not great products, it will eventually help improve formulas and drive down the price and just make them more widely available. And I mean, here we have it. They have expanded with even more mineral sunscreens, including a spray sunscreen, which I will try out in the future. The only annoying thing with these is that Copper Tone has a mineral sunscreen for kids, for babies, and then there's this one. They all appear to have the same active ingredients and almost identical packaging and maybe even formula. <laughs> I, If anyone knows the difference, I mean, drop it in the comments. I don't know enough about ingredient breakdowns to figure it out. But yeah, they might be the same product with just three different colored packaging. Pretty darn good, Copper Tone. Keep it up. This is an exciting new product from La Roche-Posay, the Anthelios Mineral High Protection Mineral Daily Cream. 
So they call it a daily cream, but I'd say it's a tinted moisturizer um, or a tinted SPF foundation or foundation with SPF, whatever you call it. Um, it's impressive to have a, a mineral SPF factor in a product like this. It's similar um, to, I'd say, the IT Cosmetics CC Cream, and I'll show you what they look like next to each other. The texture is pretty similar, but the um, La Roche-Posay one definitely is a more neutral or pinky undertone. It's a pretty good color match for me, but I tend to lean a little more neutral warm, so would prefer the uh, IT Cosmetics color, but it's not too bad. You'll see when it goes on. Uh, this, they came out with multiple shades. I mean, not many shades, but more than just one shade, which is great. I chose the shade called Light. Um, I've been burned by products <laughs> like this in the past, mostly because they'll just have a universal shade that is always too dark and the products tend to have a really thick consistency. Um, it's definitely thicker than a tinted moisturizer and has more coverage but it's nothing too too heavy. The trick with products like this is applying them evenly all over your face for sun protection which isn't exactly the same way you might apply a foundation or a concealer product. You'll see, for example, like I, I don't get it completely down my neck to my ears and you can see the difference there. You always want to layer your sunscreen products and not 100% rely on products like this. But I have worn this recently as primary sun protection and I did not burn, which is great. Um, and once I've got it applied, I'll show you how it goes on the other side of my face using a foundation brush. I find this gives a lighter application um, and it won't give you the same level of sun protection, but just to compare as a makeup product. I'll also show you um, how it looks once I've done my whole face of makeup. I have to say this is one of the glowiest but not greasy base products I've ever used. When I wear it through the day, I keep expecting it to feel greasy and slippery when I touch my face, but it doesn't. Um, it doesn't exactly set down matte, but it doesn't slip around. And the thing that impressed me the most is that it does have a long-term hydrating and moisturizing feel on the skin. Typically with products like this, the longer you wear them, the more they just dry up and make you look parched. So yeah, this is very impressive. If it was a better shade match, I think I would be, you know, completely thrilled. But it's a step in the right direction. And if you like um, a high mineral SPF with incredibly glowy properties, this might be for you. Pretty good, pretty good. So just like Coppertone, Ombrel, a big uh, skincare company, has put out their own line of mineral sunscreens. And let me tell you, <laughs> this might be the worst sunscreen I've ever tried. Stay away from this one. It's a thick white cream that leaves a bit of a blue tinge on the skin. And believe me when I tell you, it's hard to work into the skin. It created so much drag and resistance on my skin. I kept thinking it would get better, but it just didn't. It was uncomfortable to apply and looked horrible. <laughs> uh, if you've been with me since the beginning, you might say, but Vita, surely that thick white clown paint from a Ven that you tried is worse. And yeah, that is like a mask, but that is marketed and made for, you know, babies and like Mark Zuckerberg's to go surfing at high noon wearing, not an everyday for the face sunscreen as this one is marketed. And the thing with that Aven one is at least it went on smooth. This is just like chunky and funky and not great. It's very disappointed in this one. Um, Umbrella used to be like quite a reliable sunscreen company 
but I've heard people remark that once they were bought out by Garnier, they just weren't the same. Yeah, save your money. Skip this one. Here comes another dud. Another disappointment. I'm a little less angry about this because my expectations were just so low. But this is a mineral sunscreen spray from Live Clean. I was pretty overjoyed when I saw this because <laughs> I've been, you know, trying to manifest a spray mineral sunscreen for years, but oh man, it's not great. It claimed to be a continuous spray, but when it came out, it was just like spray paint, just greasy white spray paint. That's not pleasant to wear anywhere on your body. I thought, you know, oh, well, I'll hang on to this and try and use it up at the cottage when no one is around, but even using it on my feet here, <laughs> it ended up just completely staining my deck. Like, I don't know if I'll be able to get it off. <sighs> I'm still keeping my fingers crossed that eventually one day, one day we will have an easy to apply clear mineral spray sunscreen, but not today. Not today. Last but not least, I have this unusual gift of mineral sunscreen from my friend Brooke. Thank you, Brooke. This very hefty tube of Zoka lotion. And this sunscreen has such an unusual color that I'm reacting to here. It doesn't read super well on camera, but it's almost a very pale pastel lime green color tint. And as you can see, it spreads out very thick. Now I was worried because of that, it would be a repeat of that umbrella one, but was pleasantly surprised that you are able to rub it into your skin. Now you'll be able to see that there is um, some cast compared to, for example, the darker parts of my face, but it's pretty darn good and it smells really nice, like a health food store or like an all natural organic skincare product. And I mean that aspect and the color is likely because of all the different oils and natural ingredients in it. The finish does remind me a bit of the Attitude Mineral Stick and my God does a little bit go a long way. <laughs> um, I used only just a fraction of what I squirted on my hand so everyone send me your addresses and I'll mail you a sample squirt of this to try and still have enough to last me the rest of my life. <laughs> the Zoka Lotion is an SPF 36. It is reef safe. It is made in Rockaway Beach, New York and has mostly organic ingredients. Yes. All right. Well, thank you so much for watching. I've already got a bunch of new sunscreen <laughs> to try out for you, including some that I picked up south of the border down New York State Way. So stay tuned for some sunscreens that you can't get here in Canada. And let me know in the comments if you've tried any of these or if there are brands you want me to look out for. But yeah, some new faves and some new absolute just despair ones in this video. I hope you'll take a moment to subscribe to my channel and I'll see y'all soon. Bye-bye.